Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shay and thank you so much for joining me. Now today's behind the scene video is a little bit different because I actually don't have any embeds to go on to the next soap. So today I thought I'd take you along and show you some of the fragrance oils that I've just recently got in and as an added bonus I have another giveaway. So if you don't want to see which fragrance oils that I've actually got in and you'd much rather just wait until the soaps appear on the channel, I will leave down in the description box the point at which the giveaway away start so you can skip straight on through to that. So a couple of weeks ago I asked you guys for some suggestions on fragrance oils to get in from Nature's Garden and you guys came back to me with this most amazing list of fragrances to try so thank you so much. There were fragrances on there that I hadn't even noticed on the website because either I didn't like the sound of the name or I hadn't liked the picture that was attached and when I went in and read the descriptions they just sounded absolutely amazing. Now right up until that point of airing that video, I could place an order with Nature's Garden and have it shipped directly to me. But sometime in that week afterwards, they turned off the international shipping. Now when I asked them about it, they said it was to do with the fact that UPS were no longer um, shipping fragrance oils overseas. So therefore they had to turn international shipping off. They did suggest to me using a forwarder, but using a forwarder has so many unknown sort of factors in terms of what the parcel is going to cost to actually get shipped and all the extra taxes that then get applied to it that I decided that it really wasn't cost effective to do it that way. Instead, I know that we have several companies here in Australia who do buy in from the various American companies and then they rebottle and sell on to the Australian market. So I went through all the different suppliers that I know actually purchase in from Nature's Garden and I found the one supplier that had like the most of the fragrance oils that I was looking to purchase and I decided to go with them. The company I ended up going with is The Fragrance Shed and they're based here in Brisbane. They're about 30 minutes away from where I live which is a really good thing because next time I place an order, I, if I'm not in that free shipping category as I was with this one, I can pick it up and save myself a bit of postage. So today what I'm going to do is take you through and show you some of these fragrances that I ended up purchasing and we will be making soaps with them in the next coming few months. I ended up ordering 14 different fragrance oils and when you spent so much money you got to add in samples as well so I did take advantage of that and I was able to get in two 20ml samples too. Now I'm not going to go through each and every single one of these fragrance oils in depth because that's going to make a super long video and I don't want to bore you guys but what I will do is as we make the soaps later on I will give you a little bit more of uh, a description of the fragrances and my sort of impressions of them. For now I'm going to show you which fragrance oils I did buy and those fragrance oils that I do actually want to make special mention of I will actually give you a little bit more information now. So no matter what was going to happen I had to get this fragrance oil in. This is black licorice. I have an image in my head of what I want a black licorice soap to look like so I had to get that one in and if you like licorice smell you are going to like black licorice. It smells just like you've stuck your head into a box of um, Bassett All Sorts licorice. It's absolutely amazing. Now I've also been getting very curious about um, adding additives into soaps and you will see some videos of that coming up soon. I've actually been busy growing some aloe vera and I want to actually use some aloe vera and some cucumber in soap. So I also decided to get in the aloe vera and cucumber fragrance oil and it does smell really nice. It's nice and bright, clean and fresh so I'm really looking forward to actually using that fragrance oil. Now. Another fragrance that a few people suggested to me and someone who knows me really well told me that this is exactly my kind of fragrance. I love fragrances. When you smell them, you feel like there's bubbles going up your nose. To me, that's just something magical. Fragrance oils should only just have smells. It shouldn't make your nose tingle. So whenever I get a fragrance oil that tingles in my nose, I get really excited and absolutely love it. I was told I would love lavender martini and I do. I don't like lavender smell by itself. I like lavender plants but I don't like lavender fragrance oil because I think cleaning products, it doesn't relax me like it relaxes everyone else. I think of cleaning because every sort of cleaning 
item that you buy is scented in lavender so it really puts me off but when you actually blend lavender with other smells and create something new and amazing and make it a really nice young modern smell I actually don't mind lavender and the orange and the lemon zest in here and then that sort of carbonation smell just makes this lavender martini oh absolutely amazing and I'm not going to make another martini glass with this but I am going to have a go at piping something I've not piped before the other fragrance oil I got in was this champagne now to be honest I don't know if this is the nature's garden champagne or if it's another company's champagne because she had about four different champagnes on the website so I really don't know it was listed without much of a description just break out the bubbly sort of thing so I thought well I I have a soap that I want to make in a few probably four or five weeks time and um, I really want a champagne fragrance oil and to be honest it's not champagne um, I'm going to try the brambleberry champagne um, to see what that's like because I've heard that one's meant to be really good to me this smells more like palmer violets if you're english you'll know what palmer violets are they're like a little purple hard lolly almost like a musk stick but has a very unique sort of flavor to it it's really really hard to explain it is a violety sort of smell but to me that's definitely not champagne so i'm i'm very disappointed that it's not champagne but it is still a nice fragrance i'd love to know who the maker of that particular one is so they're the four that i knew i just had to get in no matter what so let's have a look at some of the others that you guys suggested to me so a lot of you suggested that i get bite me in um we do have this one available here in australia from the australian suppliers um, and it smells exactly the same it has got that berry and that re really rich cherry smell along with a bit of that citrus and more importantly that airy bubbly smell that goes up your nose um i got it in because sometimes um our australian oils can smell different to the american oils a really good example of that is sinus relief i have never come across anyone else who can make sinus relief quite like nature's garden so i'm absolutely gutted that i can't have that this winter for my customers um, but we will find something to replace it this bite me is absolutely amazing and i can't wait to soak with that all right so another one that a lot of you recommended that i get in and was actually in my wish list to get in because it sounded really nice was this bamboo and white grapefruit it is meant to have white grapefruit um, pedigree tangerine mandarin um, mimosa petals and it's all meant to be balanced out with rainforest bamboo and musk now to be honest when i actually smelt it it really wasn't what I was expecting. I don't get that fresh, bright citrus hit that I was expecting out of it. Um, definitely get the, the bamboo and I certainly do not get any musk out of it. It's not a terrible fragrance. It's a very clean, but certainly not what I was expecting it to be. So I, I'm going to have to have a really good think about what I'm going to do with this fragrance oil because my initial sort of thought um, that I had for this soap I don't think is actually going to match the tone of the fragrance that this particular one is so another fragrance that came highly recommended I actually thought twice about ordering it is this aromatherapy energizing which is meant to have notes of lemon peppermint spearmint winter greens and gardenia jasmine and rose now i put off ordering it because i use energy by aroma and i just kind of had this idea that the two of them were the same because they have a similar sort of name and i thought energy i actually really like it it's nice and fruity um nice and bright and clean so i thought well i don't really want two fragrances that are the same when i already have energy sells well for me but I thought no nope, we'll get it because quite a few people have recommended it and when I got it in oh, and I smelt it it is beautiful it is so different to that energy fragrance that I do use and it must be that peppermint and spearmint it is a real pick-me-up um, it's one of those that when I'm just feeling a little bit sluggish if I smell it I'm immediately awake and alert so I think that is going to be a great morning shower style of soap and I would possibly even use that in some sugar scrubs as well 
So another fragrance that came highly recommended to me and I had actually got in my wish list because I really liked the picture that was on it was Sun and Sand and I have some ideas of what I want to do with this fragrance oil. It's described as being an ozone blend of floral, citrus combined with white flowers, bergamot, orange blossom, ylang ylang and a light base of musk and it just sounds absolutely divine but then I like ylang ylang and orange. What I didn't notice is it said orange blossom which is very different to orange um, and they're the two smells I do like together. When I smell it there's something missing to me. It's not a bad smell, it, everything actually combines and you can smell everything that it says is there apart from the musk. I don't get a lot of that come through but what I'm getting is that I smell all those top and middle notes but I'm missing that base which mellows it out and brings all of those fragrances together. As I said it's not a terrible smell, it just seems to be missing something at the bottom of it to combine it and make it that extra special sort of fragrance. I have got an idea of what I want to do with this soap and you will actually see that in about two months time. So another fragrance that quite a number of you all suggested at different times was Crackling Birch. And as we come into our winter months, I thought this one would be perfect. It's got bergamot, orange, lemon, there's a little bit of rose in there as well. And it's all on a base of patchouli and vetiver with tonka bean. It smells beautiful. I've been wanting to do a really nice fresh bright apple fragrance soap for a while. Now I know that I've done the hot baked apple pie but that's got a lot of cinnamon in. I tend to find a lot of the apple fragrances here in Australia just don't quite have that right smell to me. So when someone suggested that I get in green apple explosion I decided to add that one into the list. It has got a real sort of lolly sort of smell to it. It smells like a green chewy lolly to me. Um, I think this is going to be really nice in some soap. I just have to come up with a bit of a design to go in there. So one of the fragrances that was suggested to me that I hadn't noticed on the website, and when I went back and looked, I think it was because of the picture. There's a picture of a pink rose with all of its petals starting to fall off, is Rosewood Musk. It was recommended to me by a couple of people um, through private messages and um, they said to give it a go. I went in and I read this description and I was quite surprised because it wasn't what the picture implied it to be. Um, it said it had notes of bergamot, tea, there was ginger, pepper. It was quite a masculine sort of combination of fragrances. So I decided we would add that into the, um, into the basket. So thank you to those that actually suggested this because it is amazing. You really do get that bergamot or that Earl Grey tea kind of smell come in off the top. It is a very unisex fragrance. It is manly enough that a man would wear it and not overpower their aftershave if they wanted to wear aftershave. So you could do something like a beard balm with it. It smells really nice for that. Um, but it's also for those women who like these sort of woodier smells like I do, it's not so overpowering that it smells like you've just left the arms of your boyfriend or husband and walked down the street. It's just got that really nice woody touch to it. It's just, it really is a nice fragrance. So if you're like me and you go off of the pictures about whether or not to order a fragrance oil, give this rosewood musk a go because it actually is really nice. So I see a lot of American videos using this one particular fragrance oil and everyone seems to go nuts for it. And I really don't understand it because all the Australian versions of this particular smell, I just smell like a bowl of wheat cereal with milk. So you may have already guessed, it is Fruit Loops. So I decided that I would get Fruit Loops in as the Nature's Garden one just to see if it has something that our Australian suppliers are not quite hitting on the head with their fragrance oils and to see what all the fuss is actually about. Now I can say that this one actually does smell better than any of the Australian ones I have actually smelt. Even though it still has that milk and wheat cereal at its base, you do get those fruity smells that you get out of Fruit Loops like that lemon, lime and the orange. Um, I still can't say I see what the fuss is about, but I think that is mainly because I actually don't like Fruit Loop cereals to start with, so um, sorry guys, I will make a soap with it, but I, I still don't understand the, the hype behind Fruit Loops. 
Alright, so the next two fragrances I've got, I'm really not sure where they come from, but we're going to have a look at them anyway. Now that we're coming into our cooler months, I am so excited that I actually get to start drinking my favourite drink again, which is hot chocolate and marshmallow. It's really not a summer drink, it's definitely a winter drink, and I knew that I wanted to have a winter soap in this particular fragrance. So I was really hoping when I got this fragrance oil in that the chocolate would be a really nice smell and not one of those chemical syrupy sort of smells that you get. And this one smells just like there is chocolate in that bottle that you could actually drink. It is a really nice fragrance. Now it's called Hot Chocolate and Marshmallow and when I looked on the Nature's Garden website I couldn't see it. But when I did a bit of a comparison, the actual picture that's on the fragrance shed is the same as what's on the Nature's Garden hot cocoa and all the sort of flashpoint vanillin and all of those sort of figures all match in so I'm pretty sure they're actually the same fragrance so this hot chocolate marshmallow could possibly be um, hot cocoa from off nature's garden and it just smells absolutely amazing it has got nine percent vanillin in it but to get that hot chocolate soap it is going to be well worth it so the final 100ml fragrance oil that I've got in that I'm going to show to you, I actually don't know where they've got it from, but I've got a bit of a hunch that it comes from a place called Just Scent because they're the only sort of supplier I could find that stocked this fragrance. And it's called Copper Coconut and it smells amazing. It's described as being a breezy, beautiful fragrance that combines raw creamed coconut with salty sea air and just a hint of um, orange, amber and tonka bean. And it's a beautiful, well-rounded fragrance. It has those really bright top notes which hit you straight away, but then that tonka bean really pulls it all together and just mellows it all back out. It's a really nice fragrance oil. And like I said, I think it comes from a place called Just Scent. I don't know who who or what it's a, a take on being a type fragrance oil but it really is beautiful so as mentioned at the beginning I was able to add in a couple of samples into my order you got the choice to be able to pick the smells that you wanted to sample or get a surprise sent to you now because there was only actually one sort of fragrance that I really wanted to try but didn't want to commit to a whole bottle I said for the second one could they surprise me and they sent me fresh cut roses now it's not a terrible fragrance but it just smells like any other rose fragrance um, it just smells like fresh cut roses it's nothing for me to get too excited about so I'll probably actually keep that and blend it with something else to make another really nice fragrance the one that I did however want to try, and again I don't know who actually makes this, I can't find it anywhere, so if you know who does this fragrance oil, please, please, please let me know. It's called Woods and Bitter Coffee. It says it's unique and earthy with top notes of cardamom, ginger, at the heart of it is almond and coffee on patchouli, wood and vanilla. And I really, really like it. It smells absolutely amazing. So if you know who makes this woods and bitter coffee, please let me know because I would love, love to get a bigger bottle of it. And I know it's not Nature's Garden that does it. And I've looked at all the others like Rustic and all of those and I just cannot find it. So please, if you know who does this woods and bitter coffee, please let me know. On to the good bit, the bit that you've all been waiting for, the actual giveaway. I'm going to start by saying a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel for liking the videos, leaving such beautiful comments and all your tips and tricks. I have been absolutely blown away in the last two months. Back in January we did a giveaway to commemorate being on YouTube for a year and we had just over 2,000 subscribers. And now, two, two and a half months later, we have over 4,000. So thank you so much. That is absolutely amazing growth in those two months. And I am absolutely honored that you guys allow me to share something that I am so passionate about. One of the most common questions I get asked and I get a lot of private messages about is where did I go to learn how to make lotions, moisturizers, and things like that? It's a little bit of a difficult question for me to answer. I actually purchased a book from off one of the Aussie suppliers called Aussie Soap Supplies and this is called Making Your Own Moisturisers by Jude Birch. This book is absolutely amazing. It is full of information about 
your skin anatomy, about pH testing, there's information about emulsifying waxes, preservatives, how to test and break your formulations to make sure that they are going to hold, how to infuse herbs and what how to use herbs in your um, skincare products. It is also full of lots of great recipes as well as tips and tricks on how to actually formulate your own recipes as well. I use that book so much as a reference point that I ended up taking it apart and putting it into a ring binder folder with each of the pages in its own sleeve so that I could make sure that the book would actually stay all nice and um, wouldn't get ripped and torn as I used it so much. So one of the problems is, is that Aussie Soap Supplies don't ship internationally and um, the book is only available, as far as I know, hard copy, not an e-book. So how do you get your hands on a copy of this book? What I have done is I have actually purchased a copy of that and I do want to actually stress I have actually purchased this book. It is not sponsored by Aussie Soap Supplies. They didn't even know I was going to run this competition. So I have purchased a copy of this book and this is what I am going to give away. I am opening this giveaway up worldwide so I will ship this to anywhere in the world and in order for you to go into the draw to win this book all you need to do is leave any comment down below in the comment section it could be anything from i want to win that book or you could give me um why you actually want to start learning how to make moisturizers or if you do it's really up to you any comment that is left down below will go into the draw to win a copy of this book and you have until friday the 19th of april that's good friday and that is midnight Australian Eastern Standard Time to enter to win a copy of this and then I will announce a winner on Monday the 22nd of April. So I have one more question for you guys before I go and you can start entering the giveaway. I do plan on doing more giveaways in the future but as the channel is growing so rapidly it does become quite time consuming to take everybody's name out the comments and move them into an Excel spreadsheet because it has to be done manually for me to then be able to cut them up and put them into the bucket to do the drawing. So in future if I do some um, more giveaways what I would like to be able to do is have some Think like raffle copter where you go and click the link and put your details in there and then I allow it to draw me a winner I'm going to leave a poll up in the top corner let me know would you still be interested in giveaways if I was to use something like raffle copter or if you know of any other sort of um, drawing um, websites out there that I could maybe use that's not raffle copter let me know down in the comments section below and if you let me know that as a comment you'll also go into that draw so thank you so much for watching and again thank you so much for all of your support good luck to everyone and I will see you on Saturday for the next soap bye